welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name's Alyssa, and I brought back on my husband. Hello. Keith Maddox. And so, in today's video, we wanted to give advice to new Christians and those who weren't raised in the church. And so, if you guys don't know, I was one of those. I started following Christ a lot later in life than a lot of people that I knew at the time. And so, we just, you know, we sat down and we talked together and we mm -hmm. figured out five things that I learned that I wanted to share with you. And he wanted to add his opinions and ad advice on it. Yeah, and we just want to start out by saying that this is just uh, what Alyssa uh, has gone through and it's it's what we've talked about, and it's not a universal guide. There may be things that you experience or uh, the things that we say might not apply to you. So uh, take just take it all with a grain of salt. This is one person's uh, experience, and uh, if it happens to help you, then uh, we'll have done our jobs. Oh, yeah. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section. I am happy to answer literally any of them. With all that being said, let's get into it. Let's get it. So the first lesson that I learned is to fall in love with God, not just your church. So when I say that, it's very easy as a new Christian, you get excited with all these new people. You're like, wow, we believe the same thing. We're all trying to follow God. That it's easy for your attention to turn from God to focusing on the relationship that you have with other people. And so your relationship with God isn't as strong as it is with the other people because your attention's changed. An important thing to remember is that a church is just a group of people. Yeah. And as scripture says, ultimately, people can fail. People yeah. can disappoint you and people can fall short. Granted, the church is a group of believers and that they are there for you. Uh, and they're an absolutely great resource. And you should want to deepen friendships and relationships with those people. Um, but don't put all of your eggs in that basket, so to speak. God is still the one that you're in a relationship with as far as Christianity is concerned. God's the one you devote yourself to. Yeah. Uh, and you're, as a new Christian, when, um, your time allocation, uh, you should strive to try to keep that as balanced as you can mm -hmm. as far as priority. God being at the top and everything else coming second. Mm -hmm. and I think there's an application there for all Christians, regardless of how long you've been one. Uh, God should, our time should reflect the fact that God is number one in our lives. And that's something I know I can work on uh, and that Same. we can all stand to keep in our minds a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Piggybacking off the first point. Even though your focus is mainly on God, don't forget to lean on your church family. And that's really important because while you're dedicating yourself to God in this new way of life, you may have to change a couple of things. And that will be hard. And leaning on your church family is so important because they have past experiences and they can give you a lot of wisdom in those aspects. There's a reason that God gave us a church. That Our church is there to... Uh, build one another up to good works, as Hebrews yeah. 10, 20, uh, 24, and 25 say. As a new Christian, take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. You'll be very surprised at things that you may be struggling with, trying to uh, change yourself. There will likely be somebody else in your congregation who's dealing with that same exact thing. Use that resource. Yeah. So, moving forward, part three is to make sure that you don't compare yourself and where you are on your Christian walk to everybody else. And this is a thing that me and Alyssa have had many conversations about. Yeah. I'm really bad at comparing myself to Keith because when I um, first started following Christ, I was super excited, but I started noticing where everyone else was was on their journey and how much scripture they knew and how they can spew out verses like it was nobody's business and I was like well I can't do that I am I not as good of a Christian because they can do it and I can't and so then I started comparing myself more and more to people around me and I used to try and like push myself but it was like an uncomfortable pushing that I was doing and so one thing that I really had a hard time with was contributing in class mm -hmm. and so I would I never contribute into class because I felt like I didn't have anything good to say and that anything that I would say is basic that everybody else would already know so I would keep it to myself or I would like write it down or I'd be like hey is, is this the right answer and Keith and Keith would be like yeah that's a good answer why don't you say it I'm like mm. and then somebody else would say it I'm like wow so you really could have gotten that one but anyway basically I just I've spent a lot of time comparing myself and um since dating you you've calmed me down from that and I'm much 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 better now what well, you one, yeah you, you are a lot better yeah started when we first started dating and, until now you've gotten a lot better at Thanks, that dude. but one thing that I would say uh, to help everybody else out there who may be going through similar things um, maybe you feel like you can't contribute or you can't or you're not doing well enough to teach um, I point to Ephesians 4 which may seem like a really weird passage to point to but Ephesians 4 11 Paul starts listing different kind of talent and roles in the church uh, is because he, he gave some apostles and preachers and teachers and pastors and evangelists 
and uh, the the one the way that I'm applying that passage here is to say that a church has many different roles, many many different roles, and maybe right now your role is not to contribute. Maybe your role is to be is to listen. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and be a sponge, exactly. Yeah. Um, if everybody is trying to contribute and trying to talk and not listen, then very little can get done. Um, you're, you listening, you just soaking things up and learning and growing is an integral part to your church, to mm -hmm. your congregation. And, and, and don't overlook that. Uh, don't forget that. Because by you growing and being stronger... You're able. You're going to be able to one day contribute to to, to work faster that mm -hmm. that church is doing. Get able to, to to teach other people faster. Um, so don't only view um, your spiritual journey as um, in terms of con contributing to things like classes and and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, see it more. At, see it as far as where you are personally. And like I said, in this particular stage, you must be listening. Um, be okay with just listening. And that answer leads us right into the next point that I wanted to talk about, which was to find your own way to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. So since I didn't feel like I could contribute in class, I was like, how else can I get the gospel out there? What else can I be doing? And so what I started doing was actually teaching my four little sisters. And mm -hmm. so we would have different Bible classes together. We would sing songs, play games, do all these like arts and crafts and stuff like that. And so I felt like I had the confidence that I could share them, share, was it share with them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, share with them the gospel and that I was teaching, the, teaching them the right things. I feel like that avenue of teaching isn't talked about enough in the church, I don't think. And it helped me grow because kids are smart. Kids will ask <laughs> the randomest questions. It challenges you to go into the Bible mm -hmm. and find the answer to their question because they will not forget the question either. They will come back four days later and be like, so Melissa, you said that you were going to answer my question. <laughs> Moral of the story is to find your own way. And recently, I've decided to do my YouTube channel. And that was the main reason why I wanted to start my YouTube channel, was to share the gospel in a way that I felt comfortable. So not even just by like having these sit-down conversations and stuff like that, but to show like how Christians live on a day-to-day right. day -day basis. And hopefully, that inspires somebody to come to Christ. And I just want to point out that there's no magic number. There's no bar exam. There's no test yeah. where I certainly know enough Bible to be able to teach somebody. That's yeah. just simply not yeah. true. If you feel uncomfortable talking to somebody else, then maybe go to, uh, and, and go do it with a friend. Yeah. Um, maybe Or maybe do it one-on-one -on -one and just don't be afraid to say, uh, I have to double check that. Let me look that up and I'll get back to you about it. Um, if you got baptized and what you knew, what you know now was enough to get you baptized. Yep. And don't be afraid to yep, share that at least. Um, and don't feel discouraged because God's got your back no matter what. Yeah. And finally, our last lesson learned for this video uh, is a thing that uh, I like to call RPA. Mm -hmm. Read, pray, and ask questions. These three spiritual disciplines are absolutely vital to growing and maturing in your faith and it's important to start the habits early so that as you mature you're able to do them more easily and you already have systems in place to help you accomplish goals oh yeah i think that's very very important because i think my growth as a christian didn't start until i did rpa <laughs> and so what i wish i would have done the most back when i first became a christian was ask questions because I was just, mm. even though it's it's good to be a sponge, you need to go back and fact check people. Fact check, is that the word? Yeah. Yeah. You want to go back and make sure that what people are saying is the truth and that you genuinely believe it because I was hearing all these things like, this is what that verse means, this da 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 da. And so I was like, oh, they've been doing this for a long time. They must have the answers. Mm. And so whenever I went and asked other people, things weren't matching up. So then when I went to check it out for myself, I came to a completely different conclusion than the first person who told me something and so I wish that I would have gotten not only the courage to speak those questions but to be okay with hey you can disagree with someone you can mm -hmm. think that what they're saying doesn't really sound right it might sound nice but it might not be right so yeah and that's why it's so important to lean on your church family mm -hmm. and to find specific people that you trust that you can go to them with those questions yeah. and know that you're going to get honesty you're going to get humility you're going to get patience from them yeah. and that they'll walk through the questions that you have so if you say hey brother x or sister y 
I heard this thing from Brother So and So, um, and they really believe it, but it doesn't really make sense to me. I have question A, B, C about it. Can you walk me through it? Mm -hmm. And that's a great way to develop relationships with people all throughout your congregation, um, and it's a way for you to grow as well. And honestly, you will help them grow. Uh, yeah. Remember when we talked about roles in the church, you being a sponge, you having those questions to ask will actually help other people. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there mm -hmm. and, to, and to ask those questions because um, chances are you're going to help somebody else as well as helping yourself. Oh, that sounds pretty good, man. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching this video, and that's all we had for this one. And don't forget, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and go check out his channel. I, like I said, it'll be in the description box. Go do it, please. <laughs> he's really awesome and he's kind of cute. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so those are the five things that I learned from as a non-Christian who became a Christian. And I hope that you guys actually took something from this, whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, or you've been a Christian for two minutes or for 25 <laughs> years, doesn't matter. I hope you got something from this. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to his channel. It'll be in the description box down below. And in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna bring him back on and do another Q&A if you guys are down for it. So shoot me your questions. And I hope you guys are staying safe Staying inside. Washing Get, your hands. Yes, washing them hands, washing them paws. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Oh, Robin. shucks. Red Robin. Yeah.